Here are some examples of one-dimensional problems involving constant acceleration. In the first example, we are given the takeoff conditions for a mid-sized commercial jet, and we have to calculate how long the time will be for the takeoff and how much runway will be used. As a kinematic problem, take note of all kinematic variables such as displacement, speed, or time, and of course acceleration. Also notate what is the question asking for? It is strongly recommended to either underline, highlight, or color code all of these so that you can quickly check back at them when you need them. immediately recognize non-standard units and convert them as necessary. As a vector problem, draw the picture involving the relevant variables. For problems involving acceleration, set up a coordinate system along the acceleration vector. we are first asked to find the time of the takeoff run. Turn to the list of kinematic equations for constant acceleration and notate which equations involve your unknown. Then narrow down the equations based on what are known. After choosing the equation, solve for the unknown, symbolically first, then plug in the quantities and calculate the answer. Make sure that at this step, you plug in all the relevant units and check that your final answer has the correct units for the quantity you were solving for. Next, you are asked to find the length of runway needed for the takeoff run. At this point, you can use the answer from the previous step because now we know the total time. We use this equation, plug in quantities with the units to get our answer. Finally, we reread the question, making sure we have used all relevant quantities and answer the question. Our next problem is a multi-step problem. First, we have a car driving along a road when the driver notices that a Cyclist has ignored a stop sign and is about to collide with him. He slams on the brakes after two seconds of reaction time. It will depend on his initial speed 
whether the collision will happen. As always, underline or highlight all the relevant kinematic quantities and take note of what is being asked for. Draw the picture so you can keep track of the variables. Set up a relevant coordinate system along the acceleration vector. Note that the acceleration will have an opposite sign to the initial velocity. This time we have three events to keep track of. We have the start of the problem where the car is still 30 meters away from the point of impact. Then we have a coasting time of the two seconds before the driver is able to react. Finally, we have the impact point. We will first solve for the distance traveled during those first two seconds. We turn to our kinematic equations and for this first part of the problem the acceleration is zero and we still know the time. Hence, it is the second equation that is relevant to us. Now we have an expression for our new starting point. Also keep in mind that our new velocity is still the original velocity. Now for the second part of the problem, the braking. This time, we do not know the amount of time, but we are really only interested in the speeds, the acceleration, and the braking distance. So we choose the third equation. We can substitute in symbolically based on our previous expression for our new starting position. When we solve this using the quadratic formula, we get two solutions. The reason for the two solutions here has to do with the ambiguity of the direction of the velocity in this third equation because its terms are squared. Hence, the relative direction of the velocity and the acceleration are not immediately known you need to look back at the drawing to check what these solutions might correspond to. The first solution actually would be a horrific scenario where the car starts out slow, but instead of braking, starts accelerating towards the biker. Instead, it is the second solution we are looking for, where the car has a moderate speed and slams on the brake to avoid the collision.
make sure to read the problem again because it still asks you to convert it back to miles per hour. According to our solution, if the driver only noticed the cyclist 30 meters away, their maximum safe speed would have been only 21 miles per hour. So the lesson for the driver is keep your eye and mind on the road and keep to the safe speed limits. The lesson for the cyclist is that they too are a road vehicle and must obey stop signs.